Now the question is, is Muriel's pay chart a function? Is her pay a function of the number of hours that she works? Well, let's take a look at this. If you come over here and take a look at Muriel's graph, you can see that it looks a little bit like a Hannah's graph. Zero to zero, and then one up to eight, and then we have a problem here at two. She's working two hours, and one day she's making this amount, and the other day she's making this amount. So we have this like blip here. She, she's getting two, pot, two different things for the same amount of hours. It, it, it doesn't make sense. And then, you know, three hours she's making that, and so and four hours she's making this, but this right in here is problematic spot because it blows everything out of the water. Now, maybe perhaps on this day, maybe she got a $4 tip. You know, maybe she did a little, little extra something for the person she was walking the dog. Maybe she gave it a bath or something. Same amount of hours, but she got a little bit of extra. So what's happening here is because these this value of hours is generating two different pays. We do not have a function. Now, once again, I'd like you to take a look at the difference here. This is the graph of a function for Hannah, and this graph right here is not a function because we have two pieces of data that are right underneath each other here. Okay, this is underneath that. We say it doesn't pass a vertical line test. For a graph to be a graph of a function, you should be able to draw vertical lines across the graph, and every place you hit the graph, there should be just one spot. Not like over here, where we had this vertical line right here hit two spots on your graph.